it's a risky atlas. But now algebraic spaces are again sheaves, but together with an atal atlas, or if you like, in a smooth or a flat atlas, it really doesn't matter. It all gives the same notion of algebraic spaces. Uh, and an um, algebraic stack, well, that's essentially the same thing, except that we, we replace uh, functors, set valued functors with groupoid valued functors. Uh, again, so there's some sheaf condition, that's what, what goes into the word stack. Uh, we require it to be, to be a sheaf in the tal topology. And then we again require an atlas. So it's a covering of some sort from, from affine schemes to our stack. So think of it as, as uh, when we write a scheme as a union of, of uh, open affine schemes. But here it, it is important that we not just have a tau, but, but smooth or equivalently flat. Uh, so this map should be smooth or flat. If you go with the tau, we get a more restricted notion of algebraic stacks. And I'm not going to really use so much about this, this kind of, of the of, of definitions here, but I'm going to use a few features that algebraic stacks come with. And the, and the first such feature is that there's a notion of points. Uh, so a point is a K point. So you can think of it as a, as I mean, if I plug in K here, I get a groupoid, I can, uh, take the isomorphism classes, so the, the associated set. Uh, so that's the, the set of K points. Uh, but then I also need to identify if I increase my field uh, to get some K prime points. So if I have, if I have a K point, uh, this gives me a point of my, of, of here. So, so elements here are maps of this sort, but we have to identify to points if, if, I, if I make a change of field, I have a commuter dot diagram like this. And these two maps represent the same point of the space. So, so in the same way, you can define the underlying topological space of a, of a scheme in this way. So it keeps the same usual notion. Uh, and the other feature that we're going to use are uh, stabilizers. And I'm only going to need the stabilizer of a point. So I pick my a point of my of my topological space. I represent it as a k point for some k. And this allows me to get a group scheme uh, gx, which lives over k. I, will, I mean, I, I think I'm going to use all these three notations interchangeably. Uh, Technically, you can you can define this as the as the pullback of the inertia stack, uh, or you could also, if you think of this k point as a point in, in a groupoid, uh, you look at um, the automorphism of the, of this point in a groupoid that gives you a groupoid, uh, and to get the uh, that gives you a group, and uh, if you do this functorially, okay, you get a group scheme. So th this is the the thing. The feature that's different from schemes at every point comes with a stabilizer. Uh, and what, what I said, this more restrictive notion, when we replace our smooth atlas with an Atal atlas, uh, then we get the notion of a dealing Mumford stack. And that's equivalent with these, these stabilizers, these automorphism groups being finite and also smooth, so, so Atal finite and reduced. So in, in Kurt zero, only finite, but in positive characters, you also have to, uh, they also become uh, reduced if you have an Atal atlas. And, and these were the kind of stacks introduced by Lynn Mumford in their 1969 papers on, on the compactification of MG. Uh, and, and of course, many nice stacks are Lynn Mumford. But this talk is mostly about about uh, stacks which are not Lee Mumford, but which has um, infinite stabilizer groups. But I, I'll do some analogies with the finite stabilizer case. Any questions? I'm going to give some examples of stacks now. 
So, I mean, the, the first uh, bunch of examples comes from, from Model I, like when, when Jim Manford introduced this. And if I want to start with a really big Model I space, I could just take the Model I of all curves. Uh, not sm not smooth, not nodal. I could uh, pick the connected component where they have genus G. I could also introduce uh, the addition of marked points. These marked points might also be anywhere on the curve. That is an algebraic stack, which has uh, you know, very bad singularities and also big automorphism groups, like the automorphism group of P1 uh, is, is affine, but not finite, PGL2. Um, but then we could do more in the spirit of, of Lee Manford. We could consider just nodal curves or even smooth curves. Again, this is still not Lee Manford. There are, like, the, like P1 has an infinite automorphic group or elliptic curve or genus one curves without marked points. So, what uh, is in Lee Manford's paper is stable curves, which are nodal curves such that the automorphic group is finite or equivalently uh, curves where we put in some uh, conditions. Uh, so if you have a genus zero component, we need at least, yeah, here's a singular point, and then we need at least two mark points. If this is a genus one component, we need at least one special point, which you have here. Or it could be a, perhaps a genus zero curve. Uh, so this, this has um, two special points if you, if you desingularize it and then they, Add another one and then it's a stable curve. So that's MGN bar, which is now is a Lim Mumford stack. Uh, and a variation of this is Konsevich model I stack of stable maps. And so there we fix a target X, and then we look at, at nodal curves together with a map to X. And again, we, can, we, we, um, we require that the automorphism group of this map should be finite, which is not quite the same as saying that, that C is a stable curve, but, but quite close. So these are, these, these are Lee Mumford stacks. Uh, so here's an example of a, of a natural stack, which has uh, infinite stabilized groups. And that's the stack of vector bundles or, or, or sheaves or complexes uh, on a scheme X. So this is the kind of stacks that are, are highly relevant for, for this talk, but, all, but also these are, are relevant. And another stack of, of a slightly different flavor uh, is the stack of logarithmic structures used by Olson. Um, so this is a stack which also has infinite stabilizers and it's heavily non-separated. Uh, even it's diagonal is not separated. But this is also a stack where we could apply this local structure theorem. So as I said, these stable curves and maps are at Lee Manford. Others are, are, are algebraic stacks. Uh, they essentially have affine stabilizers. Uh, so every stabilizer group so for example, every automorphism of a curve or an automorphism of a sheaf or an automorphism of a logarithmic structure is affine, except if I take a smooth genus one uh, curve, because then it would have an elliptic stabilizer. And, and um, yeah, if I want to summarize these examples, it's that we really need general stacks to be able to, to handle these kind of general model -like problems. Uh, we can set up a model -like problem we, we get in some, some uh, instances fairly easily, but it's algebraic. You could, you could plug in uh, Artin's axioms or, or with other means prove that it's algebraic. Uh, but it's a bit difficult to, to, to handle these kind of um, general stacks. So the next slew of examples are, are much more concrete stacks. And those are quotient stacks. 
So a uh, quotient stacks uh, arises when we have a group, uh, a group or a group scheme G that acts on a scheme X. Then it's possible to form the quotient stack uh, X mod G with this square brackets uh, indicating that it's a stack and, and not just a kind of a scheme quotient. And, and, and this comes with a canonical atlas as well. So, so we can cover our stack quotient by X. And, and even if the group action is not free, uh, this map will be, will be smooth if, if G is smooth and it will be flat if, if G is flat and, and either is okay. And the nice thing about quotient stacks is that we can, we can say a lot about the geometry or, or objects on, on the quotients in terms of objects on X, which are G equivariant. So for example, the, the, the space associated, the topological space associated with the stack quotient is nothing but the space of G orbits. The, the stabilizer group of a point of my stack is exactly the, sorry, yeah, this, this, this is the stabilizer group of, of, so I'm starting here with a point X. I'm considering the, let me see if I can write here, P, P X. So uh, I have my point X uh, in X. Uh, it, has, um, it has a stabilizer group. And the, the automorphism group of the corresponding stacky point is exactly, exactly GX, and hence also the, the notation GX for the stabilizer of a point of the stack. And similarly, if I have a, a sheaf F, so here F is a, let's say a coherent sheaf on, on my stack, then taking global sections here is the same thing as pulling back this sheaf so this corresponds to a um, equivalent sheaf on, on my uh, Roman X, on my scheme X. So sections of, of, of this sheaf on the stack is nothing but G equivalent sections of the corresponding G equivalent sheaf on X. Comology of the sheaf is the same thing as the G equivalent comology of the corresponding, corresponding G equivalent sheaf. On, on the scheme X. So everything here on, on the stack side uh, correspond to some, some G equivariant notion on, on the scheme side. And, and the slogan here is that quotient stacks, uh, or as we can see an equivalently just a group action is much easier to understand than, than general stacks. And we can say a lot about properties of, of quotient stacks in terms of, of uh, known things on the G-equivariant side. Uh, just as a very simple example, if I, have, if I know that G acts on X, then I know that every stabilizer of the stack is a subgroup of G. But if I have a stack and I have pick a point and I look at its stabilizer, it's very difficult to say something about the nearby, nearby stabilizer groups. Sorry, could you repeat that example again? I think I missed it. Yeah, so, so if, I, if I just pick a point and, and then I have a stabilized group, then, so, so, so I don't know very little about uh, uh, GY for, for, uh, for other Y, even, even generalizations of Y. Uh, so I, I'm, let's say that, that, let's say even if, yeah, let's say this has a, a GM stabilizer. What can I say about other points, let's say in a neighborhood or in, in a of Y, what kind of stabilizer do they have? But if I know that if I have, if I have, uh, if I know that X is X mod G, well then I know that every stabilizer will be a subgroup of G. So I, I, can, I, can, I can bound the stabilizers on, on, on my stack in terms of the, of the G. 
So like, do you have any assumption on G, like an algebraic group or? Yeah, so here G is, I mean, it's kind of uh, implicit here that everything lives over, over some base scheme and this has to be flattened, flattened on final presentation. Okay. So is this for, for this map to be an FPPF covering, which is the definition what you need for an algebraic stack that the atlas should be flattened, faithful flattened final presentation. And, and also when I write this, uh, there's, a, there's a sheafification going on here. You take, you construct this stack as the FPPF, uh, as the quotient stack in the, in the category of, of um, FPPF stacks. So you have to, you have to sheafify in the right topology, in the same topology as, as you need for, for the group. Okay, thanks. But the kind of, the, so the, what the local structure is about is passing from, from general stacks where we have difficulty to, to establish many things and, and passing to the case of quotient stacks where we can, where are lots of tools are disposal. And, and all these applications at the end will, will, will show examples of this where we can prove things by knowing that th things are locally quotient stacks. Uh, yeah, so the, que the question of this talk is kind of when, when can I take a general stack such as a modelized stack and, and know that it's locally in some sense a quotient stack. Uh, and the kind of known case is, is the case of clean Manfred stacks. So we call stacks with finite reduced stabilizers. And uh, there, there's this notion of a coarse moduli space. So under mild assumptions in this case, uh, for example, separateness, there is a coarse space. So this is a map from our Lean Manfred stack to a um, scheme or more generally an algebraic space, which is the closest approximation to the stack X in the category of algebraic spaces. And it's a, a good approximation in the, in the sense that the underlying topological space or this associate of topological space is the same for the stack and its coarse space. And they also have the same, same sheaf of functions. Uh, so if I take my, like a function, um, uh, how should I say it? I mean, if I, yeah, every every function here induces a function here. So the, the same sheaf functions uh, as far as they could have. Uh, and if I, if you can, sometimes you can really write down what this is. So in the case of a quotient stack, where you have a, a group acting on an affine scheme, uh, then uh, the this core space is just um, the usual uh, scheme quotient, which can be done, it can be, oops, yes, these uh, brackets shouldn't be here. Uh, so the usual scheme quotient, the coarse quotient, which has the spectrum of the G invariance of A. So again, you could see there's a relation between properties of the stack, or in this case, it's core space and, and the G equivariant, um, the G equivariant uh, geometry of, of the scheme, spec A in this case. Uh, yeah, I don't think I'm mentioning it here. Yeah, but there's also, it's also true that, I didn't write it here, but, but uh, the, the core space, uh, bold face X here is the initial space, uh, initial object, uh, in the category of maps towards algebraic spaces, meaning that if I have a map to an algebraic space and I have my, my core space here, there's going to exist a, a unique map. So it's, it's always going to factor uniquely through the core space. So in that sense, it's the closest approximation of the stack X by, a, by an algebraic space. And we can use the, 
the core space to get the local structure as follows. So here I have my, my stack and its core space. And uh, if I pick a point in, in my stack, one can see that there is a neighborhood of this point of the following form here. So I can, I can get an affine scheme with an action of the stabilizer group of this chosen point here. So I have a point U above X. Um, and it's a fixed point under, under the action of, of GX. So um, this F here is, 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 um, is uh, inducing an isomorphism of the stabilizer group of, of U and, and X. Uh, so this is not an, not an isomorphism. X is not a quotient stack necessarily, but the, it's an Natal map. That the, um, so so this is an Natal neighborhood of X, which is a quotient stack. And moreover, uh, we can fit fit this this uh, Natal local structure in a, in a Cartesian diagram uh, on the level of of core spaces. So this is also a coarse model space, it's exac exactly of the shape of this uh, example. I have a finite group GX acting on, on this affine and, and the core space here is, so this, that's now spec A GX and U is spec A. Hi David, and, and, so U yes. depends on little x, is that correct? Yes, I mean, you, I mean, the, I mean, I'm picking for 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 chosen x. Okay, I see. I'm, I'm picking an x. Then there exists a u with an x no, action of gx. And of course, I mean, a nearby point here will have um, a stabilizer, which is a subgroup of gx. But if I pick a point which is, does not have gx as a stabilizer, I would have a different well, tile neighborhood around that point. Okay. And this is also not this is also not subjective. It's only, I mean, it, its image will be open and, and a neighborhood of X. But if you want to cover all of all of, of the stack X with with stacks of this form, you would have to pick, yeah, a finite number of, of different points. So different does this discussion also hold if G's are reductive, for instance? Yeah. So that's 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 exactly what what the local structure theorem is about. Okay. We're going to, to get a generalization of this when G is infinite. And yeah, using, using the core space is very easy to, to, to get this description. Uh, you, can, you can pass to the hensilization of the core space. And then if you start with an Natal presentation of your X, it will, it will after passing to the hensilization, it will split up in, into connected components. And you could just, and the, you, you could find the GX acting by permuting those components. But it's also true without, for example, if X is heavily non-separated, you might not have a core space, but, but this part of, or this part of the diagram is still valid. So that's the, um, well, first let me just um, emphasize here that this is an isomorphism on, on this U to the X, because this is Cartesian, it's a pullback on the level of schemes, means that the stabilizers here will be the same as stabilized in their images. But now I can, I can, I can ignore the core space, uh, ignore this assumption, and I still have this diagram. Can I ask one more question? So um, you're saying, are you producing this U out of the core space somehow? Is that what? Uh, I'm saying that it's very easy to do that. If you have a core space, you can just etal localize on the core space. I see. And, and, you, and you will have that. In this case, it's very easy to prove. Uh, but you can also prove it, and I mean, the existence of this is roughly the same thing that goes into the construction of the core space. So you, you construct the core space by first getting it tell neighbors like this, and here you know how to construct the core space, and then you take the fiber product, so you add the fiber product here, you show that this also has a core space, and then you get, uh, then you take the, the quotient of this equivalence relation to, to get the core space of X here. So, so really this is the proof. I mean, the fact that this works 
in general is the proof of the, of, of the Kilmore theorem. Cool. So as I said, the, the goal here is to do this uh, in, the, in the case of infinite stabilizers and the more affine stabilizers. And the, and the statement is as follows, but uh, yeah, let me first introduce my co-authors. So Jared Olper from, from University of Washington, Seattle, uh, Jack Cole from University of Melbourne, and, and for the third paper also Daniel Hatton Eisner from Cornell. So this is not, not yet available, but it will be, yeah, I, I'm almost sure it will at least be available this year. I mean, it's, it's very close to being finished, but in these days you never know. Uh, so the first paper here is is roughly about uh, the case where the stack is of finite type over an algebraic closed field. Uh, in this case, we handle the, the case over base and also mixed characteristic. And in the third paper, we also don't only look at local structure on the point, but local structure on the closed substack. So, which is useful for for some applications. Um, so I'm going to, going to mention some of those as well. So these Ferran pushouts are Milner squares, right? They are what? The Milner squares. They are not Milner squares. Oh, well, yeah, sorry. Yeah, they are, they are generalized Milner squares. They are, uh, uh, yeah. So that's just one of the applications. So it, yeah, it, for historical reasons, I guess. So these are squares where you have a closed immersion and an affine map. Right, 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 right. So, so the usual squares, uh, well, which I call pinchings, are when you have a closed and a finite map. And sometimes, I guess Milner only used closed and closed even. But if you like do the Schlesinger, yeah, you, actually in, in Schlesinger's criteria, for example, there you have nil immersions here. Uh, yeah, but quite frequent cases where it's finite here and, and then they're quite well behaved. These are qu actually quite bad because the push out is almost always non Ethereum. Uh, but in the in the theory of of relation, relation rings and and yeah, you know, Riemann-Zariski space and so on, they they appear naturally as gluings of of relation rings. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, I can mention that at the end in the applications. Yeah. So the the statement here is similar to the Lee-Manford case. So I'm now phrasing in the first paper here where X is a stack over an algebraic closed field. I pick a point and the, the crucial assumption here is that the stabilizer of the point is linearly reductive. So reductive is not enough, you really need linearly reductive, which in character zero is the same thing, but in positive characteristic is quite restrictive. So in positive characteristic, it's, it's almost being a torus uh, it's a torus up to a finite tame group. So for example, a finite tile group uh, prime to the characteristic. But you can also have a mu p is also allowed in positive characteristic. So that's, a, that's a, the, 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 the really the main assumption. And then there's a second, uh, not so um, restrictive assumption. Uh, and that's that, uh, uh, all the stabilized groups of all points should be affine. So I'm disallowing uh, things like the automorphism group of a genus one curve, elliptic curves or abelian varieties as, as stabilized groups. So under, under these two assumptions on the stabilizers, we, do, we have a local structure of the following form. So again, there is an affine scheme with an action of of the stabilizer group. There's a fixed point of, of, of this affine scheme. And there's an tile map from the quotient stack to X, sending U to, to X, and also inducing a, an isomorphism on stabilizers uh, from, from U to X. So, so that's exactly what, what you get in the Lee Manfred case when you don't have a core space. So, so, um, 
so as per the rules of the seminar, if you put your own theorem, you are supposed to drink. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have water in my glass right now. That's awesome. <laughs> you just assume water. So is there any counterexample for these sort of statements if, for instance, G is uh, unipotent or something? Yes. So these are... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yeah. So, um, so the, both of these conditions are necessary. Uh, so I, and you can give a kind of similar counterexample for both. And these are just... Uh, a group scheme or A1, so a degeneration uh, in to get a counterexample to to linear reductive, we can pick a, genera a degeneration from 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 a one-dimensional torus to to a GA, so it's a unipotent group. And and it's now impossible to have a local structure at the, at the close point. So I mean, I, here I have A1. Here I have my my. Now let me just draw GM sitting over here, somewhere, let's say, over one, and over zero, I have GA. And the local, so, so X uh, in this case is, is BG. So it looks like, uh, it looks like the topological base will be A1. I have the trivial, um, so you can think of, of BG as uh, the quotient stack of A1 with a trivial action of, of G. So what happens here is that at, at the point one, I have now the stabilizer group equal to, to GM. And at zero, I have the stabilized group equals to, to GA. Uh, and now if I would have a local structure around zero, so I, I pick here X to be zero, I would then have something affine mod GA, the additive group, and this will be a tau to, to my stack X. But that would lead to, to having a, an etal map from, from the stabilizer group of, of U, uh, sorry, uh, um, sorry, you know, not quite this, but, but uh, yeah, if I pick a pre-image of any point different from, from zero, I mean, uh, this, as I said, it won't necessarily hit everything, but it will at least map to an open of A1. So let's say I pick a point here, uh, let me call it Y, uh, and I pick a pre-image, let me call it perhaps V, uh, then I would have uh, the stabilizer of V mapping et al to the stabilizer of Y, which is GM, and this is a subgroup of of G A. Uh, so, but G A has no subgroups of finite index, uh, which it would need to have to be one dimensional. So I would have, so this would actually would be equal to this. And I would have a, would have an Natal map from G A to G M, which is not possible. Natal group homomorphism. And I can get a similar counterexample if I would instead take a degeneration from the elliptic curve to GM. So uh, now I would violate two here. I would have an, a point with a elliptic stabilizer, but I would apply the local structure on this uh, linear ductic group. And in a similar way, I would have here get an elliptic, uh, an elliptic curve mapping et al to GM, which is also not possible. So, and, and uh, you could also see that in positive characteristic, if I would replace linear reductive with reductive, it wouldn't work. So there's, there's, uh, there's non-trivial deformations even for, uh, for non-Artinian stacks. So if I just have a thickening, uh, I, I could get uh, non-trivial uh, stacks, which are not tau locally of affine mod stabilizer. All right, uh, so that, that's the theorem I'm going to talk about. And, and the proof here is, is much more involved than for Lee Manfred stacks. So it's, uh, it requires several new ingredients. Uh, before coming to the proof and, and the, these good moduli spaces that we also need, so let me discuss some uh, examples or 
situations where it's known. And if we start with in the in the equivalent case, so we we have a stack. So so my 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 x here is now already a quotient stack, uh, but x is not affine. X is just a scheme. So if I also assume it's normal, then I can even get an open neighborhood. So I can get an open affine neighborhood of X. So this is a theorem by Sumihiro and also the, the kind of basis for, for toric varieties. So if I here have a, if X is a torus uh, compactification, then I can, I can um, find uh, open affine, open equivariant, uh, an open uh, affine equivariant cover. So I can uh, give this, um, affine charts where I have affine toric varieties and so on. So I recover a fan and so on. Uh, this is not quite the same as the theorem, of course here I'm, I'm taking a, the um, local structure is, is affine mod T and not affine mod stabilizer. It's very closely related. But no, it's F open and not a tau. Uh, and even closely related, the result is Luna's slice theorem. And here X is an affine scheme with, a, with an action of a linearly deductive group scheme or, or a group or a field actually in, in his situation. Um, and then the theorem holds, you have an etal, uh, there's an etal uh, local structure of the form affine mod GX. So there, there is some u mod gx et al uh, towards my stack x mod g. But, but in this case, you can uh, also arrange so that this, uh, this affine uh, neighborhood or this affine thing you use for your quotient neighborhood is sitting as a local closed subscheme of x. So in the general theorem, our stack does not have any scheme. So there's this, you can't really express this for a general stack, but for course stacks, you have this. And you can, you can suit this up uh, actually with a different theorem of Sumi here, not, not the one mentioned above. Uh, so you can, you, can, uh, you can also get the same Luna result when X is a normal scheme and uh, G is a, just a smooth affine group scheme and, and GX is linearly reductive. So you're getting fairly close to, to our theorem uh, when the stack already is a quotient stack. But you need, uh, you need this normal scheme assumption. Um, and for the log stack that I mentioned before, uh, you, can, you, can, you can get very explicit uh, uh, local structures um, of the form affine space model group. So this is very much related to toric, toric geometry. Uh, and there was also a, a fairly recent result by, by Jared Olper and Andrew Kresh uh, for the case of, of nodal, nodal but non-stable curves. So this is not a lemma for stack, uh, but they were using the geometry of, of nodal curves to, to obtain and tell uh, uh, tal cover where you are affine mod the stabilizer. So this, this result is, is completely subsumed by our theorem. And, and to give a, an example where um, uh, just kind of the, the, the absolutely, I think it's absolutely the simplest non-trivial example of a quotient stack where we can apply our theorem, which you could easily do by hand also in this case, but let's go through this. So I have here a nodal cubic with an action of, of GM. So it's, I mean, GM is the complement of the, the singularity. It has a natural action on the nodal cubic. It has a single fixed point um, and an open orbit. And if I would 
try to to I mean this this Sumihiro theorem would say that well this is a normal this is a scheme so you could hope for having an affine open equivalent open neighborhood but this is not possible because if I would take an open neighborhood it would it would intersect the open orbit and then it would have to contain the whole orbit and then it would have to contain the whole nodal cubic curve and it's not affine. So there is no affine open neighborhoods of the singularity. So open, open also does not work in general. You have to use the tau neighborhoods. And the tau neighborhood uh, that we could pick here is that you could take the, the double cover of your nodal cubic. Uh, that's again projective, but if I, if I remove one of the singularities, I get exactly an etal neighborhood where now I have an affine curve with an action, action of GM. And I mean, explicitly, it's just a, the two copies of A1 with, a, with a, the usual action of, of GM. So, this is how, what the local structure would produce in the case of the nodal cubic mod, mod GM. Okay, I think I need to go on. Um, so there are some refinements to this. I'm not going to go into detail here, but there's, um, in general, it could happen that this is more stacky than this. It in, induces an isomorphism stabilized group on, on this particular point u to x, but on other points, it could actually be a little bit more stacky. Uh, it's a tau, so it can only add a finite amount of, of Stabilizer, but doesn't could it could happen. But it turns out that if if x is not too non-separated, it's enough that the diagonal is separated. Uh, then this does not happen. And even better, in in many cases, we know that this the um, the diagonal of x will be affine, and then the map is even affine. Um, and in a case where the stack is smooth, so we we have. Oh, sorry. In general, the etal maps or etal neighborhoods are not representable. You're saying yes, yes. They, they could be very, they could be non-separated and, and even non non-representable. So they could add stackiness, and, and it happens when you can't you can't avoid you can't uh, avoid it. I see. Is there an easy example where you can't avoid it? Uh, so you could take. Uh, it's easy to get very very non non-separated examples. You could take, for example, if you take a one. Uh, we take a one again, but then you take the group scheme, which is which add which is like Z mod two, but except for not having a Z mod two or zero. Uh, so then, if you take the stack quotient, you will have you here you will have a Z mod two, but but here you will have a trivial uh, uh, trivial uh, stabilizer. And if you do the the local structure round. Around this point, you would exactly get get back a a one with with a trivial action. So so in this case, you see here. Oh, sorry, no, uh, this only no that was the, the this was the wrong example. Uh, you you have to go to do the following example instead. Um, you can take a non-separated uh, Z mod two. So you have Z mod two only at the origin. That gives you a stack which has a Z mod two. Uh, at at origin, and then the the stack quotient will then oh, the the local structure will look like a one mod mod um, z mod two. So this is an tau map which actually increases the stackiness. Right. So at the beginning you have this the bug eye point like the double. Right. You have, you have a group scheme which is non separated. So in this case, as you see, I mean, it has it does not have separated diagonal. So you have to you have to do a really bad bad stack. I see. Thank like you. this, taking a quotient of a scheme by a non separated group scheme. Mm -hmm. So that's that's uh, yeah. But in this case, that that can that that will happen. You can't avoid it. This is actually kind of the unique uh, tile structure. This is a counter example of this. Uh, if the stack is smooth, I, I get that it will cover by an affine mod GX, but I can also get an etal 
map other way uh, down to uh, representation of gx. So here I have gx acting linearly on, on an. So this is similar to saying that uh, a scheme is Sariska locally et al or, or an, or an algebraic space is et al locally et al or an. So here my stack is et al locally uh, of the form affi mod gx and that's et al or an mod gx. So, but, so what is the action of gx on an? Can you like- So it's linear, so there's a, so there's so, I mean, I could perhaps, uh, perhaps I should write like, like v mod gx where v, v is a, uh, GX representation. Is th is that like the tangent bundle of? Right. Yes. That, so you could take so V is exactly exactly the tangent bundle. Well, well, it's. I mean, there is no tangent bundle. So it's really it's the normal it's the normal bundle of of the point X, in in X or or even to be precise the residual gerb, at at X, in the stack curly X. And because that the uh, stabilizer is linear reductive, it, that will mean that the uh, stabilizer acts on the on the normal space. Thanks. And uh, there's also this generalization where even when when gx is not linear reductive, we can use our theorem because we can. There's a ver version of the theorem where we only have a subgroup which is linear reductive, and then we get a map from from some affine mod h. Uh, inducing this inclusion of H to GX. Uh, but of course, then this is not necessarily going to be tall anymore, but uh, only smooth. Or if in positive characteristic, uh, if the quotient is not smooth, then we're only going to get a symptomic map, so a flat map with LCI fibers. And, and, and to get this case actually requires uh, the full strength of the third paper. Uh, so the, the 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 technology in the first and the second paper will only give the smooth and tall case, even when you work over a point or over algebraic closed field and so on. Uh, and and this is a quite nice in positive characteristic when you want to to you know let's say that G is reductive but not linear reductive and you could pick a maximal torus, and then you could you could get a nice nice. Um, you get this even if 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 the stabilizer is not reduced. And there's also a very closely related to the symptomic version. There is a version for quasi-smooth map of derived stacks. It's a very easy generalization when, when you have this symptomic case. And there's also further refinements that I mentioned already before. There's a version of in mixed characteristic. Uh, it gets a bit more complicated to state uh, because you can't talk about just a stabilized group of, an, of a point in, you have to pick a K point and so on. And then you have to cook up this group scheme living over something and so on. Uh, but there's, there's a nice way you can always get the metal structure where you have GLAN acting. And if you go further, uh, not quite keeping the stabilizer, you can get the group living over spec Z. And there's also a version where the group lives over, over some given base where X lives over. And, and as I also mentioned before, the third paper, we, we work around a substack instead of a point. Well, let me continue with um, the thing that we are missing so far in, in this in this statement of the theorem. And that is the, the analog of this of this course moduli space that we had in, in the Lim Manfro case. So we, we had both a core space of, of this local structure and if X had a core space we also had this uh, Cartesian diagram. And there is a version of the main theorem that exactly gives you this. And, and here you have to replace uh, the coarse moduli space with a good moduli space. And uh, so this is, as I mentioned very in the very beginning, it's related to GIT quotients. So here we have a GIT quotient of the affine scheme U with the axon of GX. And, and this is an analog of a GIT quotient. 
And if I have good modal space, then I can, then I, I get a Cartesian square like this. If I don't have a G, uh, if I don't have good modal space, I can still use that, that this has a GAT quotient or a good modal space. And this is very important in the proof of the theorem. And uh, in contrast to the Lynn Mumford case, it's, it's even if it had a good modal space, uh, the, the result is as difficult as the general case. So we have no shortcuts, even if we know that it has a good modal space. Wait, wait, David, sorry. So I thought once you have your eta local structure theorem, you can produce the good modular space. And right. that... yeah, so so not quite, but but I mean if you if you have this, if you have this side, and and you know that you know that you have a good modular space, then then it follows that there exists a map like this and, and making it Cartesian. So there's a so it's a version of Luna's fundamental theorem. Well, saying that if if this is stabilized and preserving, then it descends. Uh, and you, you, if if you also need this to have affine diagonal, uh, then you can prove that uh, it's going to be stabilized, preserving, and and descend. I see. But but what you're perhaps also referring to is that using the local structure theorem, uh, Jared Oper and Jochen Heinloth and Daniel Hap Leisner. Uh, have proven, we have given a criteria for the existence of a good modular space. But but the problem is that even if you have this, uh, uh, you have the good modular space here, you can you can do the fire product and produce perhaps a good modular space here. Uh, you need uh, you need this to be uh, to be stabilized, and preserving, and so on to descend to something here to give give, give rise to a um, to, to, an, to a group void or to an equivalization of algebraic spaces. Uh, so you need this map to be stabilized, preserving and so on. And, and this is the thing that's difficult to, to establish. So that you need some extra uh, conditions on the stack for it to have, have a good modular space. But they, they managed to, to write down some very, um, yeah, very, very nice like validated criteria for, for um, for having good modal space. Thank you. So I can mention it later on. It's it's a later slide. Um, and and the definition of good modal space is quite similar to the core space, which would have a map from a stack to an algebraic space. They should have the same functions. Uh, but they need not have the same space. Uh, so that's not a condition, but instead uh, we impose that push forward of coarse square and sheaves should be exact as if it would be an affine map. Uh, but it's not an affine map. It's very far from being affine, but we say it's cohomologically affine. And, and this exactness condition on, on push forward of coarse square and sheaves has amazing consequences. Uh, we again get that it's the initial among maps to algebraic spaces. So it's a, it's a universal object just from, from these two conditions. Uh, the map is not a homomorphism, but it's universally closed. So it's kind of also, it's, it's kind of affine, but it's also kind of projective. So it's like you com combine affine geometry and projective geometry, so you can get the best, best bits of both sides. So for example, the push forward will preserve coherence as if it would be a projective, but it's also exact. So if you, if you imagine all the kind of results that you have to prove with, with doing induction on or using all cohomology groups and so on, you can here often prove things just by using a single cohomology group, like global sections. And even if it's not a homomorphism, at least every fiber of this map has a unique closed point. And that closed point has a linear reductive stabilizer. So from, from every point on our space here, we have a canonical closed point in its fiber, which has linear reductive stabilizer. All this follows from, from, from these axioms. 
this is not quite the analog of, of GIT. It's rather GIT in, in character zero or, or GIT in positive characteristic when you only have linear reductive and not reductive stabilizers. There is a notion of adequate moduli spaces that captures uh, GIT in positive characteristic also. But then you have to replace, replace this condition. So the, the natural example comes from GIT. Um, you know, so if you have a scheme with an action of a linear reductive group and an ample line bundle with an action of, of G, then we have this notion of the semi-stable locus of X. If I take the stack quotient of the semi-stable locus for G, uh, that stack has good moduli space, the GIT quotient. In this sense, it generalizes GIT. Uh, in the very simple case where I have an affine, um, so X is affine and my ample line bundle is just a trivial, the structure sheaf, uh, then the GIT quotient is nothing but the invariance of X. So again, the same thing as what happens for the core space. In the projected case, well, there's this, you just take invariance of, of the section ring of the line bundle. And then the GIT question is projective. Uh, so here I have, uh, yeah, if I take A2 with weights 1, 1, so G and X by scaling both X and Y, well, then there's no invariance. So I just, the invariant ring is just K. If I, but if I instead take both the positive and negative weights, then I get a more interesting invariant ring. So then X times Y has weight zero. So that, that's an invariant on A2. And if I draw these two examples, just to get some kind of feeling how the stack quotient looks like. So here I have, here is a picture of A2 in, in the two cases. Uh, here I have the stack quotient and here I have the, the, the good moduli space. With, with even weights, then I have the orbits are the fixed point zero and the open the orbits the lines that pass through the origin minus the origin. And, and all these lines, they are of course the same thing as, the, as P1, but then I also have this fixed point, which is a point of the stack, which has now a GM stabilizer. And these points are not closed points. They are K points, but they are not closed points. So this happens for these kind of stacks because this point corresponds to an open or, or a locally closed orbit. So they're actually not even open, they are locally closed, these points. But this point is the unique closed point of the stack because it's a unique closed orbit. And now you see here, I mean, this, this is a, actually a, a closed map and the pre-image of this has a unique closed point. This, 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 uh, this, the origin which kind of contracts all the points of the P1. If I take uneven weights, uh, sorry, I am one positive or negative weight, then I get more closed orbits. All the hyperbolas are closed. So for every T, I get a closed orbit. So these are the points here. Uh, but when I when I when T goes to zero, I have three orbits. I have the x uh, the y axis minus zero, the x axis minus zero, and then I have the the close point, the, the zero. And this corresponds to these three points. So this stack is, is non-separated and it has these two points are locally closed and in their closure, there is this point with, with stabilized GM. And again, this so is the pre-image of, of T equals zero in, in the good moduli space in the spec of K X Y has three, these three points and it has a unique close point. The, the, the origin in A2. So this is kind of the geometry of, of these kind of stacks. So it's just, just GIT. So let's say something about the main theorem. And yeah, so how long should I go on? Uh, half an hour or 25? From, yeah, from, from now roughly or? From now, yeah. Okay, so 
So let me say something about the main theorem and start with some kind of overview and, and let me compare it to, to a theorem of a kind of a similar, yeah, similar proof from sense or analogous proof. And that's uh, the proof of the algebraicity of a stack, so Artin's axioms. So Artin has this uh, result saying that if you have a functor, groupoid or a set valid functor, then it's algebraic if and only if, and then there's a bunch of conditions. And the way that Artin proves this is by first picking a point, a K point of the stack, using formal deformation theory to get a map from from, from a complete local ring to X. So it's kind of a formal atlas. And then approximating this formal atlas with a smooth atlas from some affine scheme uh, mapping smooth to, to X in such a way that the completion of the, the, the smooth atlas is the formal atlas. So you start with something formal and then you kind of in some sense spread it out to, to a smooth atlas. Uh, so our theorem is, uh, the proof, our proof is similar in some sense, but uh, we have to use stacks here and here. And the correct notion of stacks that we're going to put here is kind of affine mod gx. Uh, and, and to be precise, well, the, we call this linearly fundamental stacks. Uh, so they have an affine good moduli space and they have the resolution property, meaning that every chief can be resolved by a vector model. Uh, but the, the case to have in mind here is just that it's, it's of the form affine mod, a linear reductive group, which you can embed into GLAN. That's almost, almost the same thing. But this is a, this is a more, um, it's a more useful definition. And the stack, uh, the, the proof of the local structure theorem now goes as follows. So I'm going to do the case over a field and so on. Uh, I pick a point, uh, for simplicity, assume it's closed. Uh, a closed point on a stack is also cut out by some ideal sheaf, and we can then take powers of the ideal sheaf that defines infinitesimal neighborhoods of, of X. So this is the point X I've written as BGX, so it's a point with a stabilizer GX. I have all these um, infinitesimal neighborhoods, and now I want to, from them, build a complete a formal neighborhood. And I'm going to use the tangent stack here, uh, or perhaps rather the normal stack. So it's really the, the normal stack I'm having in mind here. So it's the it's a tangent space or the normal space. It comes with an action of GX. So I can, I can uh, take the quotient here. So it's affine, it's even like AN mod GX. And then I can start with my, my point with a, with a GX. Uh, it sits inside the tangent space, it's just a zero. So here X maps to zero. Uh, it's an isomorphism on the first, uh, by definition on the on the first neighborhood but then i can i can uh, lift this sequence of of infinitesimal thickenings to to maps to to the tangents stack this this uses uh, that the stabilizer is linearly reductive even otherwise even that this will fail uh, and then comes the the interesting thing here that we have to make sense of of this formal affine scheme, or not a formal affine, but rather spec, uh, the usual spec of a formal, of a complete local ring. And you can make sense of that for the tangent stack, and then we can use um, these closed embeddings to make sense also of the completion of the, of this for, of, of these uh, infinitesimal thickenings, and that is now um, a complete, local stack corresponding to spec of a complete local ring. Oh, sorry, David. So this script x little x with hat is just the co-limit of all these neighborhoods, right? 
So it turns out, uh, a posteriori, kind of, that this is actually, um, this is the co-limit of, of this in the category of, of algebraic stacks or um, uh, to be precise, you need to, let's say, algebraic stacks with, with affine stabilizers. Uh -huh. Uh, so, so it's it's not it's not the co-limit. I mean, you, you, like in dry geometry and so on, you of, often take the, the co-limit um, just as functors, but that will then be something uh, like the formal algebraic stack. So this is really in the category of algebraic stacks. Thanks. And then how about this Tx with a hat thing? Is this a co-limit? Right. So yeah, yeah, I'll come to the. It's also the co-limit of the of the infinitesimal neighborhoods of the tangent stack in the same way, but I'll come to how we really construct this. So I mean. This, this is what it is, but you have to show that this exists. Uh, can, I, can I ask a simple yes. question too? Um, so these infinite, infinitesimal neighborhoods are uh, spectra of all modulo i to the n. Right. Yeah. So this this is uh, like the relative. Mean, these are uh, x uh, and x. It's just uh, the vanishing of of i n plus one. So we take the closed substack defined by i raised to the power n plus one. And you can lift i zero to i n by your uh, smoothness. Uh, um, yes. So I'm using I'm using that this is smooth, and I'm using uh, like Illusis, my just usual infinitesimal deformation theory, but also using that uh, that um, that this stack is cohomologically affine. It's on the next slide, but I, I perhaps I perhaps I should skip it. And uh, yes, I'm, I'm sorry. One, one more question. So these ins, uh, they are not unique. So you just fix some choice, right? Uh, these are uh, are not. They are they are unique up to non-unique uh, to isomorphism or something like that. So, or perhaps they are not even unique. I, I mean, yeah. It depends a little, but yeah, but I, I just pick some choice. It doesn't matter. I don't okay, can... thank you. Uh, seems to me that, uh, this is actually a unique, unique object. But then comes another thing that's kind of uh, very non-trivial and that's, I, I have by definition, this sits inside X, but I need to be able to map this constructed completion to X. Now, of course, if, if this really is the co-limit, then, then that is uh, easy. But so, so, I mean, I said here, this uses Tanaka duality and it uses affine stabilizers, the second condition. And what Tanaka duality with this assumption gives is exactly that this is the co-limit and hence it extends. And then now, so now we have, now we are here, we have a complete local stack mapping to X, like a formal Italian map. But now we want to, to kind of spread this out to an Italian map. Uh, and this uses art in algebraization, uh, like art in used in his six nine paper, but we have to do an equivariant version of this. But, but the end result that there does exist a finite type stack uh, uh, mapping to X, such that it completion at this point, whatever that means, uh, well, the co-limit of the infinite neighbors, for example, is isomorphic to the to the to what we began with. Um, but yeah, so this I guess uh, well, I already answered this when it's it's uh, the obstruction sits inside some some X group, and because of smoothness, uh, this only sits in in. Um, the dual sits in degree zero and minus one cohomologically, and, and this is an H1, so the obstruction vanishes. Uh, but there are different choices because the H0 is not zero. But to, to see this vanish, I need to use that this is cohomologically affine. But that's a very easy consequence. And, and um, yeah, so, so what kind of was the starting point of this whole project was that we, we realized that the, the right definition of, of being complete in this setting is not, not something formal, but we, we, we say that uh, X is complete along closed substack if 
the coherent sheaves on, on X is isomorphic to the in, to inverse systems of, of coherent sheaves on the infinitesimal neighborhoods. So this is very much in spirit of this Tanaka duality that, uh, um, yeah, let me skip these examples, but the, the crucial uh, theorem that we, we need to prove uh, is that if I'm giving a stack with a good moduli space, uh, then the, the stack is complete in, in this uh, Tanakian sense if, if the good moduli space is complete. Uh, and the, at the good moduli space, if the good moduli space is affine, it just means that this affine scheme is complete on a closed subscheme. That's exactly that it's it's um, uh, that it's um, is it's I adequately complete if I, if if this thing is if the closed thing is I, I cut up by I. So verifying that the stack is well, the stack is complete if its good moduli space is complete. And this also gives a, a way to complete things like the tangent stack. Namely, I take my, my stack and then I base change it by the completion of the good model space. And then I get a complete stack. So maybe I missed this, but what it means that it's linearly fundamental? Right, so this is the, this thing that it has, uh, that it has linear reductive stabilizers at close points. And, and uh, it, has a, it has an affine good model space and it has the resolution property. But the, the, the thing to have in mind is that it's, it's something like affine. It's affine mod linear reductive. So for example, we, we apply this to the tangent stack, which is, an, uh, is a representation of, of GX, which linear reductive. Uh, so I can use this on the tangent stack and I can now define the completion of this tang tangent stack as a tangent stack Bay changed by the completion of its good moduli space, which is just this invariant ring. Um, so, I mean, this is in some sense, uh, it's very much related to, to formal functions and, and similar things in projective geometry. Uh, but it's, it has some twists, it's, it's different. In some sense, it's, it's easier, but it's also more difficult. So it's but when you get the right thing, it's not, it's not too hard, but it's, um, it's a very important theorem. Uh, I'm going to skip this. Uh, and then there's the Tanaka duality, which says that uh, maps between stacks can be read off from uh, monoidal functors between uh, their monoidal categories of coherent sheaves. But here we need the affine stabilizer. So this is the only point where affine stabilizer enters, but it, it is really necessary. Uh, and what we are, so in the, in the proof of the main theorem, when we want to construct this map from, from the completion of X to X, what we're using here is that a map here is the same thing a map in, in, a diff, in the opposite direction uh, from coherent sheaves here to coherent sheaves here. This is by by Tanaka duality, then I know that coherent sheaves on this complete thing, that's the same thing as inverse systems of coherent sheaves. So then I can move out the, the inverse limit here, and then I can use Tanaka duality again to say that that monoidal functor here is the same thing as a, a morphism of, of stacks from, from the nth infinitesimal neighborhood. So in this way, I can, if I have maps here, I, I get a map from the completion. And it also follows that, that I can think of, of this completion as the co-limit of the infinitesimal neighborhoods. But I have to make this affine stabilizer assumption throughout. And then there's the, the covariant algebra algebraization, which I'll skip. Wait, and then this, this affine stabilizer thing is like necessary. You actually- it's necessary, yeah. As I said, if you take this uh, generation from an elliptic curve to, to GM, it doesn't but work. We use to verify some abstract criterion. I mean, some, that's, I don't know, that's shocking. Yeah, it's, it's I mean, but you can think of it this way. I mean, yeah, from, from this point, it's not, not so surprising since if you have like a B of an elliptic curve, then the coherent sheaves 
they're like the representations of elliptic curve are all trivial. So there's because you have a proper proper group mapping into an affine group. There are no map maps. So so there's very few there are, I mean, there are no interesting sheaves on 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 B E or or B of an abelian variety. So you can't you can't see things on on uh, if you have a non-affine stabilizer using coherent sheaves. Well, perhaps it's a bit surprising that uh, the local structure doesn't work, but yeah, it doesn't. I mean, there's this counterexample. Okay, so in, I in guess. What sense is this, sorry, in what sense is it, is it a generalization of uh, the, I don't know, classical Tanaka duality? Yeah, so classical Tanaka duality is about the case where the stack is, is BG. Uh, or when I think when, when both T is BG and this is BH. So, um, um, right, so, so you know, a map from BG to BH is the same thing as a map from G to H up to conjugation. And, and here you would have um, H representations and, and, and G representations. So if you have a nodal factor from from the category of H representations to the G representations, then you get the map from G to H up to conjugation. And I think that's the classical Tanaka statement. Thank you. That you can recover the group from its uh, nodal category of representations. So I don't have that many minutes left, but uh, I, can, I can go down to a few of these applications. So there's some equivalent geometry uh, I think I'll skip those, but one, one interesting here is, is the Bevanitsky Brula for the Lean-Manfro stacks, which is it's quite useful. Um, there is, uh, but I think I will mostly focus on this. I mean, uh, as I mentioned earlier in this talk, that there is a criterion for the existence of good modelized spaces. And it's very uh, nice. We won't ask you to take eight shots, David, don't worry. Hmm? We, uh, we won't ask you to take eight shots of drinks, but you know, don't worry about it. <laughs> All you need for every every theorem. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, let me let me let me do this. <laughs> I think that's six on the on this page at least. Yeah. Well, uh, no, I'm I'm just yeah. Okay. No, but you do reproof everything. <laughs> you do reproof the things which are not even. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Um, uh, there's also this which I which I like. There's a you can uh, so Curvin gives this uh, partial desynchronization of of GIT quotients, uh, and we can give a full generalization of stacks with good modal spaces using the local structure. Um, we can also um, so yeah, for example, you, show that linear reductive group schemes are etai locally embeddable, which is very. So do you say partial desynchronization? Yeah, so what happens is that the curve, on, I mean, what it does is that you start with a, with a stack with a good moduli space and you end up with a different stack, which is now has now a core space. So here you have a good moduli space. And, and this now is, this is very singular if this is smooth and this is less singular. Because this is just, a, just it just has tame quotient singularities. Okay. Uh, but then you can you can go on and resolve the same right. singularities. So so it's um, you can desingularize the, the good model space even in even in positive characteristic. But you need linear reductive stabilizers. Uh, there's also some uh, you can get some some home stacks between stacks that are algebraic. Uh, use it to construct uh, generalized Thomas, Thomas invariants. Prove that derived categories of algebraic stacks are compactly generated. So that's something you can actually check at uh, locally. That you can hanselize and, and take completion of stacks, which I mean, this went into the proof also. Uh, and even along uh, closed substacks or closed sub schemes, and, and this is related to this um, from our pushouts. And if you want to apply this to, to equivalent K theory or K theory to st of stacks, well, then you also need not only tal neighbors, but also Nisnevich neighbors, but you can also do that in some situations. I think I'll go to the, um, to the, to the Wolper Hulp Leister Heinloth theorem. 
Give me height. Yeah. So, so what they prove is the following. So you have now an algebraic stack. It has affine diagonal, which is necessary to have a good moduli space. At least, well, depending on how you do definitions, but. Um, and then they can prove that it has a good moduli space, uh, a separated or just a good moduli space, if and only if it satisfies some very natural conditions, which they call theta reductive, uh, S complete, so shall be complete. Uh, in a non separate case, it's a bit more complicated uh, condition. And then you need this thing in positive characteristic that it has linear reductive stabilizers at close points. And it, yeah, this, if you don't know what theta reductive and S complete is, it might look uh, strange. But the thing is that they're really like value criteria, lifting criteria, and not for evaluation rings, but for some very closely related stacks. So in the, in the theta reductive case, you have spec of evaluation ring times A1 mod GM. So it's in fact also a one dimensional stack, um, which looks like almost like gluing of two relation rings. Uh, in this case, you have a relation ring and you have this somewhat complicated looking formula, but it's also like a gluing of, of two relation rings. And then, and then you have the, uh, the condition that um, like in the theta case, if you start with uh, having a map outside zero, to X, you should be able to complete it. Um, um, perhaps unique, I, I don't remember the, uh, the definition now. Um, but in a similar condition for, for, the, for the S complete with the STR. So, so just as you can verify that uh, something is separated by, by a value criteria, you can verify if you have a good model space by a value or, or relative criteria by a lifting criteria. And these are criteria that has been um, already present in, in the, like model of sheaves. Um, so they are, they are very much related to, to hadron Shimon filtrations and so on. Um, yes, let's see. I'm going back to here. Is there um, any votes for some other application? Bielonitsky Birula. I could have said Birula. I hope I have it in my slides here. I do have it. Yeah, so the, for the, the statement we have here is, so you're starting with a proper and lean manfo stack together with a GM action. So in the paper of Priya, I think this was the, the moduli stack of stable maps uh, to, to, to uh, I don't remember when, to, in his case, a specific stack so that it's actually smooth. But we, we yeah, so we have a smooth stack, a smooth proper with an axon GM. And then we also need this, pesky condition, but it's also actually necessary, otherwise it's false, that the, that the core space of the Lean Manfro stack is, is a scheme and not an algebraic space. Then we have the same result as for, for, for GM actions on schemes, that uh, if we first look at it as a fixed locus, we can, we, we can stratify it into disjoint union of smooth closed substacks. And for every one of these uh, uh, fixed locus or, or these fixed locus components, there exists an attractor, uh, and, and this is the XI. Uh, it's a locally closed G maker variant substack that maps down to the fixed component, and this is an affine vibration. And, and uh, if I take all these um, attractors together, uh, they, they map by to, uh, to X. So I, I get a stratification of X into these attractors. Um, 
And in the way that we use the local structure is that we apply the theorem to, to the quotient of, of x by gm, which is now uh, not a Lee Mumford stack, but the stack with, with uh, extension of gm as stabilizers. And then, then we, we use what I said before that this, the local structure will then look like u mod gm, but then I can also make the tau down to, to, affi uh, to, to a representation uh, mod gm. Um, and in the case of a representation, I can just read off the, the, the fixed locus as, as uh, where I put all the, uh, the coordinates with, or, or I take, I take all the non-trivial representations. I have to, I mean, I take the trivial, trivial sub representation that's the fixed locus and those with positive weights are the, the attractor. Uh, but it's not quite as, it, this looks like, like it's a direct reduction, but you actually have to work quite a bit to, because, because these maps are not going to preserve uh, they're going to preserve the fixed locus, but they're not going to preserve this, um, the attractor locus. And that's why, for example, you really need things like the coarse moduli space, uh, the coarse moduli space being a scheme, that's a essential condition. Okay, I, I think I'll stop here and I'll just put up a slide with some open questions. So maybe thanks for your attention. Maybe it was. Uh, any questions for David? Yes. Uh, go, go, the, the, this is a bit like, I don't know, maybe a bit background question. So what is the difference between Filinitsky, Pirola, decomposition and Kempfness stratification? Um. Aren't they essentially the same or? So I, I is, may I, isn't the Kempfness stratification, isn't that from the stable and unstable locus of, um, of the pieces of this unstable locus in terms of in, in a GAT setting? Uh, which perhaps, well, um, yeah, so but they, aren't, aren't those open also from the? I mean, it is related in the sense that if you have, you have a GM action on a projected scheme, and then you have, you have the wall crossing and have this opens. And if I pick an open where I have uh, uh, good quotients, but that also that contains both. Uh, both sides of, yeah, but uh, yeah, I guess it, it is, yeah, I, I know a little about the Kempfness certification too. Any other questions? So what, what, what we should expect in the, in the non-productive version of good moduli spaces? Yeah, uh, sorry? What we should expect in the non-reductive version of good moduli space? Ah, you, know, you, you mean non-reductive? Yeah, not even not even positive characteristic only, but even non-reductive. Yes. So, so the thing is that we can't get, as we saw, we can't get right, right. But but we, what you could hope for is to just have at least know that it's a quotient, a tau local quotient. Okay. Okay. Uh, but but it's uh, it seems also. Um, it couldn't also, it can't be of the form affine. Well, it can perhaps, yeah, perhaps you could have affine mod GLAM at high locally. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, you could perhaps hope for even affine here. Um, my, my gut feeling is that affine would be too much to hope for. Uh, but even this would be, I mean, this is actually, ex this is exactly the same as ha having the resolution property that every coherent sheaf is resolved by vector bundles, which is a very useful condition for, yeah, things like, like showing that you're, that, you're, that the dry, dry scatter is compactly generated and so on. Um, so I think this, the, you could hope for this, but I have no idea how to prove this at the moment. I think there, there are, um, I 
yeah, the thing, the thing is, I mean, even infinitesimally, you start with the GA and then you embed it into some GLAN, but then when you take infinitesimal thickenings, you might have to change your GLAN, even after passing infinitesimal neighborhoods to encompass. So even, even infinitesimally, it's kind of strange. And then, then uh, there's no way when I mean, you can't complete the stacks and so on. I see. So even the first step of the proof should like would right. be right. Even that, even that fails. Uh, there is, uh, I mean, there is a non-reductive version of good moduli spaces that I'm, yeah, worked on a while ago, uh, and that could perhaps be used in some setting. It's it's very similar to, to this graded unipotent case, of, of Curvin and her co-authors. Okay. Um, so, so in, yeah, I would I, I would guess that in 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 good situations, like when you have not a good model space, but you have some in some unipotent stabilizers, but you have some some GM grading, then you could perhaps hope for 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 proving something like this. But it could be true in general, but I I wouldn't be able to prove it. If there's no other question, let's thank David again. Um, thanks again for inviting me here. Thank you. It was really nice. I couldn't see, I couldn't see so much of the view and it's a limited amount of sightseeing. I mean, people we usually just hang out. I mean, you feel free to like uh, I don't know, hang out with us. <laughs> yeah. That was amazing. Thank you so much. Thanks for the talk. I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Can I ask like maybe a weird question? Sure. <laughs> so like. Is there a, in the non-commutative world, is there a good notion of good moduli spaces? So like, if, right, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of like perf x mod g, not as like, as like g equivariant perfect complexes on x, right? And then I want like a non-equivariant category under it, or something like this, yeah. or with, with like certain nice exactness properties. And, and, um, I mean, you could, you could... Yeah, I mean, if you think about the affine case, I mean, in the case with G acting on affine, you could just take spec AG. So in, in the non commuted case, you would have something similar to spec of, of I mean, you could think of the spec as non commuted ring. Um, so you could, well, you could then, I guess, ask for if you have a, right. if you have a, if you have a category of coherent sheaves or, or, or G equivalent coherent sheaves, if you somehow, I mean, let's say you have, you have a spec A and take G equivalent sheaves on that, is there, is there a way of recovering AG? And of course, this, you just take the, you take the global sections of the structure sheaf. Right. Uh, but on the other hand, if you're, so what would that be in a non commutative setting? Right. Well, like that. Then it doesn't quite work, right? Because then, then um, if you just, if you know that your stack is, well, the, the Korean sheaves are perf of, of a non-commutative ring or an A-infinite algebra or whatever. Okay. Uh, if we would just take the... Yeah, if you take the G, the G invariance of the non, of the associated algebra. Yeah, yeah is that... Yeah, but yeah, perhaps there is a. Yeah, I have to think about it. It it sounds. Be because this condition of like. Yeah, but I mean, it, I mean, it, you could always do do something like that for for any any stack, and not every stack has a good moduli space. So there has to be some. Right. There has to be some conditions. Um, uh, necessary for this to have, at least have good properties. Um, I mean, I, I'm very like, I, I like this condition that pi lower star is exact. Yeah. Very non-commutative. So, so perhaps it is, I mean, non-commutative, we would perhaps need to say, you know, I'm guessing that you would, you would have to say that there exists some, some non-commutative algebra, which a map with a map that's exact on oh. some sense. Maybe I should stop the recording. <laughs> mm. uh, stop.